Hello, everybody. I would like to greet each and every one of you with a happy Sabbath. As the sun has set on this Friday night, God's holy hours are upon us. My name is Pastor Lewis Moffness, and I welcome you to tonight's Vespers. And tonight's Vespers is very special. It's a consecration message that is meant especially for a particular group of people, and that is the graduating seniors at the Guam Adventist Academy. And I would like to extend it also to all the graduating seniors across our islands, and I would just like to dedicate this consecration message to you especially. But to everyone who is listening, this message is for us to consider how we are called to a very special purpose, a very special purpose to consecrate ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ waiting class I welcome you I would like to welcome you by name because I know uh, some of you were my Bible students before and some of you are account as close friends to myself uh, I would like to uh, congratulate Mary Jo Ben and Samuel Duenas and uh, the two of you are so dear to me and I also would like to say hello and congratulations to the twins Carlos and Ramon Leon Guerrero even up until today I can't really tell you apart. <laughs> I would also like to extend the uh, congratulations to Sean Ronion, and this is my own church member, and I'm very glad that God has brought you this all this uh, this far. And Glenel Robinson, may the Lord richly bless you. Now, this consecration service, I would like to begin with prayer. So let's let's lift up our voice to the Lord, our heavenly Lord. As we open the Word of God, we want to talk about consecration. We want to talk about hearing you, about doing things for you, and also going places with you. And I ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us, because your word is so beautiful and so high and so deep. We are in need of the best teacher available, and that is our God. And so please send your spirit to us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> when we talk about consecration, the word itself it, it, uh, the word con means together, S and secretion, that part of the word, means, you know, something that's sacred. In other words, if we're going to consecrate something, we need to be joined together with something holy. And when we are consecrating a group of people, such as the graduating classes, we are saying we want God to go with you. And there's special ways how this has been done in the past, where we've had prayer and laying on of hands. And there is one particular service that I found in the Bible that applied to the priesthood in the Old Testament. But it, it tells us so many things about how God wants us to live holy and productive lives in his service. You find this in the book of Exodus chapter 29. And reading verse 20. This is the consecration service of the priests, the, the high priest Aaron, and also his sons. Aaron was going to be the high priest, and his sons were going to be the priests. And this was supposed to be a legacy that would go from, uh, from father to son, and this is what happened. I would just like to read verse 20 of Exodus 29. It says, Then shalt thou kill the ram, and take of his blood, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron, and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons, and upon the thumb of their right hand, and upon the great toe of their right foot, and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. When we read about the Old Testament services, especially when we hear about the blood of a ram or a lamb or a bullock or a goat, we realize that these, uh, these sacrifices, they pointed forward to a very special thing. And you know what I'm talking about. All of the animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament was telling something about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ um, sim symbolized the Passover lamb, where they took the blood of the Passover lamb and they put it upon the, the, the lintel and the doorposts of the people who were there in Egypt, the, the Israelites in Egypt. And the blood of Jesus Christ saved the firstborn of Israel that night. 
But here we see the blood is not being placed upon a door, but it's being placed upon the person himself. And could it be that God is showing that Aaron and his sons, showing us that the priesthood was to have a, uh, their, something about them was supposed to be covered with the blood. And if we extend it further, God is telling you and me that the blood of Jesus Christ must be applied to three very specific things in our lives. And so let's consider how God told him to put the blood of the ram upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and of his sons. The right ear. Do you want blood on your ear? <laughs> well, the blood, as it is uh, the, the claims of Jesus Christ's blood upon our ears, there's only one thing that we, that what we usually use, use our ears for, and that is to hear. Of course, our ears are used for other things like balance and things like that, but usually it's for hearing. And the ear symbolizes what we hear, the things that we allow ourselves to hear, listen to. And I think this is something that's very uh, important because from a young age, we were taught to listen. Listen to your mother and father. Listen for an alarm, like a fire, fire alarm, to listen to our teachers, to listen to... So we're always taught to listen. And God, he says, I want the blood of my son Jesus to cause you to listen to me. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 9, he says very plainly, he that turns his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Now that's very strong talk because we want God to hear our prayers. We want God to, to listen to our prayers. We want God to listen when we speak. And of course, he himself also wants to. He wants to listen to our prayers, but the relationship has to be both ways. If we want God to listen to us when we pray, then we also need to have our ears opened to what he is asking us to do. We need to have our ears open to his law. We need to have our ears open to his word. We need to hear him speaking to our hearts and saying, this is the way, walk in it. Because graduating class of Guam Adventist Academy and everybody else God is sending you out into the world. And there are so many voices out there. There are so many things that are trying to get your attention, to get your ear. Who are we going to listen to? Who are you going to listen to? Because God wishes to speak. And I, I find this, uh, this, this in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1. De Deuteronomy 5, verse 1. Now Moses, he says, And Moses called all Israel... And said unto them, Hear, O Israel. Isn't that interesting? Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn and keep and do them. Of course, if we are going to live a life that is pleasing to God, the first thing we need to do is listen to him. And of course, the ears, um, you know, that with our ears we take in information, audible auditory information, we process these sounds and we, and we interpret these sounds, whether it's uh, someone speaking, someone singing, or a car horn, or, or an alarm clock in the morning. We, but the ears isn't, aren't the only things that bring in information into our minds, but also our eyes, what we touch, what we smell, what we taste. Through these senses, Two agencies are trying to, uh, to gain access into our hearts and minds. The devil is always seeking to try to get his word into your ear. He's always trying to get um, his uh, visuals into your eyes. He's always trying to get you to taste his drink, his food. And we need the blood of Jesus Christ to close off all these avenues uh, to the enemy. 
That's what it says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, and reading verse 15. It says, uh, it, it's talking about who is going to be finally uh, in the kingdom of heaven. It says, he that walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppressions and that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stops his ears, that means to close their ears from hearing of blood and shutting his eyes from seeing evil. And so our God, he wants the blood on your ears. You know, there, have you ever heard a, a person who, who doesn't like what they're hearing and they say, you know, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to listen to that. Now, too often, many, most of the people of the world do that to God, where they say when God is trying to speak to them and, and we say, no, I don't want to hear that. We need to switch it around and say, God, I want to listen to you. But when we hear about blood and violence and immorality, those are the things that we should say, you know what, I don't want to hear that. I want to stop my ears and close my eyes from, from taking all this wicked and evil information and rather give our attention, our listening, our seeing, everything to God. Let us consecrate our ears to God. But it didn't stop at the right ear, did it? No, the right thumb. It, the blood was placed upon the right thumb. Now, the thumb is a very interesting appendage on our hand. Have you ever uh, paused to consider just how important the, it seems to be like almost like the shortest of all of the fingers that we have. But when we take that away, we are seriously crippled in what we do with our hands. And by the way, it was the right hand because most people are right-handed. The right thumb was to be covered with the blood. And that is because the thumb, being one of the most, you know, pretty much the most important uh, finger, it, it symbolizes everything we do with our hands. Our hands are employed as soon as we wake up to get up and grab our toothbrushes and brush our teeth, to feed ourselves breakfast in the morning, to put on our clothes before we go to school or work. And God wants us to have the blood of Jesus consecrate these hands for him. If we look in the book of Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Can I just speak to the young people who are listening now? Especially you, Guam Adventist Academy, who are listening right now. You have such strength. You have such vigor in your youth. You are about to step out into the world after you're, gra after you're graduating. And God says, whatever your hand, whatever you're going to do with it, do it with all of your strength. And this is... What Jesus said was one of the great commandments, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our strength. And if we're going to do something, let us do the work of God with all of our power and might. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 15, we read it before when it says to stop our ears and close our eyes to the hearing of blood and the, and the, and the, the seeing of evil. But... I wonder if you heard that part in the verse where it says that shakes his hands from holding of bribes. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever tried to hand something to somebody when his hands are shaking like this? In other words, it's impossible. If somebody tries to give you something that will cause you to dishonor God, why not shake your hand at that? If somebody tries to take your hand and lead you somewhere, why not shake your hand so that he can lose his grip? And when the devil says, why don't you reach out your hand and take or, or do something that you know will dishonor God? Remember, as you are stretch, stretching out your hand, I want you to look at your thumb and see the blood of Jesus on that consecrated hand. Because when God... When he was on the cross, there was blood on his thumb, blood that flowed from the nail that pierced his hand. And Jesus says, my hand was pierced on the cross, and so I claim your hand as mine, because you're going to be called to do many things. You're going to be called to do many uh, works of business and other types of labors, and good, honest, 
holy hands are needed if you're going to have success and joy in your life. And then, after the right ear has the blood upon it, as the blood of Jesus Christ consecrates the right thumb, we see at last that the blood was supposed to be applied to the right big toe. And just like the thumb, the big toe is a very interesting, uh, it's the biggest of the toes, and if you remove the big toe, you will find that it is nearly impossible to walk. Because that big toe is able to take a very big percentage of your, of, of your body weight. You know, um, when, I remember when I used to do, when I was as young as the graduating class, I remember I, I loved to go climbing, especially rock climbing. And you know, it's very interesting because when you're climbing a sheer cliff and you have just enough ledge for your big toe, you have enough to, to balance yourself and reach for the next uh, handhold. The big toe means it's the, it's the strength of your feet. It, it represents where you go. It represents the direction you're taking. And it would be well if, if our young people listening today and all of us, it would be well to use our feet to go only where God leads. In the book of Joshua, chapter 14, and reading verse 9, it says, And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever. Now please hear the next part. Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Did you, did you hear that? Every place where they were going to put their feet was going to be given to them as an inheritance and their children because they followed God. Now, that's interesting, that verb, followed God. Well, that means that they walked right behind him. God was the one that led them, and they put their footsteps directly in the footprints of a God who was leading them. They used their feet to go only where God led them. Are you prepared to do that very uh, direction in life? Are you prepared to say, Lord, I will search for your way and I will walk in that way. I will walk where Jesus goes. And Jesus, you can find his footsteps, you can find his footprints, he says in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, he says that when you went to visit the sick, when you went to go to visit the people in prison, when you went to uh, clothe the, the naked and give food to the hungry, you did it unto me. So you can find Jesus in service. You can follow the footsteps of Christ where he went, where he is going today, and may his feet f um, lead the way for your feet as well. You know, it's really interesting because if I were to ask you, between men and women, um, which of the two do you think is most um, concerned about how beautiful their feet are? Maybe I can ask Mary Jo and Glenell Robinson that. Do you think it would be the ladies? Do you think it would be our female counterparts, gentlemen, who are the ones who really would love to have their feet the most beautiful ever? If you go into a store, perhaps a shopping mall, and you see shoe selections, do you think there are more choices for ladies' shoes or more choices for men's shoes? <laughs> our ladies, our dear sisters, and, gentlemen, it would be great to, to, to ask, are my feet beautiful? Hmm. How do we make our feet beautiful? Is there a special cream to rub on it? Do we have to paint our nails? Of course not. The Bible actually tells you how to have beautiful feet. Did you know that? In the book of Isaiah 52, verse 7, it says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet, beautiful feet, 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace, that brings good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith to Zion, Thy God reigneth. You want to have beautiful feet? Then let the blood of Jesus be on that big toe. Bring, use those feet to go and give the good news of a wonderful Jesus, a wonderful Savior who loves people. There are people who have not heard that yet. There are people who do not know Jesus the way you might. And so I encourage you, let your feet be beautiful. There are, no, there are no pairs of shoes that you can buy. There are no cream or any type of thing that you can do to your physical feet to make it as beautiful as this. Because when Jesus, when his pierced feet, when his pierced feet went from, um, well, this was before the cross, when he went from village to village, when he went from person to person, when, he, when he, his feet brought him to lepers and to, to people who were sick and people who were lonely, he went to them. There were people who sought him out, yes, but he went to people. His feet carried them there. Those weary feet, I'm sure, that were, so, were so tired sometimes. And yet John the Baptist says, I am not worthy to even carry his sandals. Why? Because those feet are the most beautiful feet. Those feet loved people enough to go to them. Will you have the feet, beautiful feet like Jesus? This is the, the, what will make your feet the most beautiful before it even steps upon the streets of gold that are in store for the kingdom of heaven. God wants you to go and bring Jesus to the people that will listen to you. You know, our Jesus is wonderful. You know, he was the one, he is the true high priest. He is the true priest, and his ears, he stopped it against hearing of blood. He, his ear was always open to the law, to the commandments of his father. His hand always, was, always had, were consecrated to doing good works and to shaking his hands from things that were dishonest and immoral. He always used his feet to go places. He was the true high priest that Aaron represented. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, it says, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. And this is what consecration is all about. I already told you in the beginning, consecration with the holiness, you need to be joined together with Jesus who is holy. He's giving you an example, following in his steps. Go with him. Walk beside him. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26, it says, For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And what Jesus was to everybody around him, he is calling you to do the same. I remember when I was in the Philippines, and it was a wonderful time that I spent there um, ministering and also studying to become a minister. And every Sabbath, my son, his name is Elijah. Elijah and uh, the, with us, all the family, would go and we would, we would visit people in the hospital there on the campus of the university where I was studying. And we would go in there and we would sing songs as I played my guitar and we would read Bible verses and have prayer with the patients who were there. And I remember this one time where, as we were walking into the hospital, there were these um, there were these hedges that lined the path leading to the hospital front door. And in the hedges were these red flowers, tiny flowers, small ones. But I believe it was my son Elijah who said, "I want to give a flower to the patients who are inside." 
And so Elijah would pick the flowers, and he would give the flowers after we were done singing, after we, uh, after we would read the Bible and pray with them. He would then come forward and give the flower to the patients. And a lot of the patients says, oh, what a, what, a, what a beautiful gesture. Thank you very much, you cute little boy. And there was a lot of that. But there was, was this one young student who was in that hospital bed. We sang, we read the Bible verse, we prayed, and then we said, we have something for you, and we sent Elijah in there to give the flower. And as the young lady took the flower from our son Elijah, she was overcome with emotion, and tears started coming down her face. And I thought we did something wrong. I thought we did something to upset her. And so I asked, is everything okay? And she says, yes, you don't understand. I'm a working student. I don't have money to pay for my tuition, so I work to pay for my tuition. And here I am sick, and I don't have anybody to come and visit me. I don't have anybody to, uh, to take care of me. And so I, I was just calling out to God. And I said, God, if you care for me. God, if you love me, then please send someone with a flower. When I, when I heard that and I explained it to my little son Elijah what happened, he couldn't wait until the next patient that he could give another flower to. And it was just a simple way to remind us that if a little child just by consecrating his, his little fingers to just hand a flower to somebody who needed it, although he didn't know it. What more can God use, each and every one of you, if you just give your, your ears, your eyes, your hands, your feet, your heart to Jesus, and say, Lord, use me in any way you wish, if we submit our will to the will of God and we say, God, you go, I follow, consecrating every word, consecrating every act, consecrating every thought and every Im impulse of our hearts to Jesus, and then, my brothers and sisters, then we will truly know what it means to have Jesus dwelling in us and the joy of serving him will become a reality in our lives. Guam Adventist Academy students, graduates, I would like to encourage you, and all the graduates who are graduating all over our islands, I would like to encourage you as you go out into the world. The world is a big place. It can be a scary place. And there are many challenges that you are going to be meeting. And the one advice that I have for you is go with Jesus. Give everything to him. Would you like to do that today? To everyone who's listening, would you like to give your give everything to him so that he may use you? I invite you to pray with me as you give yourself to Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Lord, I just would like to thank you for what we just read. What we read, dear Lord, is that the blood of Jesus must not just wash us from sin, but consecrate us. Reserve us, dear Lord, for a holy purpose, holy service, to do things for you, to listen to you, to go where you are leading. Lord, I would like to pray for the graduating class at Guam Adventist Academy. I pray, dear Lord, for Mary Jo Ben. I pray for Samuel Duenas. I pray, dear Lord, that you please fill them with your spirit, that they may go with you. I pray for Carlos and Ramon Leon Guerrero. I pray, dear Lord, that these, this set of brothers, that their hearts, dear Lord, will always have Jesus in it, in them, abiding with them, teaching them, and leading them where they should go. Please be with Sean Ronion and Glenel Robinson. Bless them, dear Lord. As they consecrate themselves to you, I pray that, that you will open up paths of usefulness in your service. Bless them. 
with success. Bless them with your, with your, with your grace. And to not just to this graduating class, Lord, but to all of us, as we give ourselves to you, I pray that we will realize more and more what it means to walk with Christ. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that each and every one of you has a wonderful, happy Sabbath. May God bless you and give you grace and joy.